thank you. I'll tell you, you cannot make this stuff up. Just two days ago, while I was thinking about this big talk about conservation, I'm walking across the zoo and there's this little kid, nine years old, in a red shirt, big white letters that said, save the earth, it's the only planet with pizza. <laughs> and so I said to that kid and his dad, he should be giving a TED talk. <laughs> but I bring you a story of hope hope for wild animals for saved from the brink of extinction, and mostly hope for your grandchildren and their great-grandchildren. I was lucky years ago to write a book with Jane Goodall, and the title is Hope for Animals in Their World, and it started when Jane and I got together and realized both had had the same experience, which is more and more when we talked to groups or visited with kids even, they were losing the spark in their eyes. They were losing hope because there's so much bad news in the world about nature. And that news is true, but what's not told is the counterpoint to that. And so I brought a prop. This is a very rare thing. This is a body part from an extinct animal. This is a wing feather from one of the last 23 California condors that were in the wild. They were all caught by the US Fish and Wildlife Service and put in zoos. But the good news is they were bred like crazy. There's over 300 condors today. They fly in the wild. I've seen them above the Grand Canyon. They look as big as a barn door. And they are an inspiration of what's possible, because they were saved from the brink. The peregrine falcon is a similar story. The, the condor was endangered because of lead poisoning. The peregrine was endangered because of pesticide poisoning. Peregrine, the fastest animal ever to live, flies over 211 miles an hour. They were gone from eastern North America completely. But they filled that vacuum once the environment got cleaned up. I was in Cape May Point, New Jersey, in October of 05 when 287 peregrine falcons flew by on the same day. So they've made a big comeback. The great American comeback story is the bald eagle. When I moved to Ohio in 77, there were zero bald eagle nests in the state of Ohio. They were done, and they were thought they were going to go extinct in most places. Um, but they have made a huge comeback. They were endangered, of course, because of pollution in the water, uh, lakes and rivers. There weren't enough fish for them to feed on the top. But thanks to the Bald Eagle Protection Act, the Endangered Species Act, and others, huge comeback in the state of Ohio last spring, over 200 successful nests of bald eagles just here in Ohio. And as the saying goes, <laughs> as the saying goes, if conservation will work in Ohio, it'll work anywhere. So. <laughs> But there are other stories, too. The California gray whale is back to carrying capacity. My favorite conservation story in the entire world is the gray wolf. It's back in Yellowstone from just 29 animals released 20 years ago. It's back in the northern Rockies. If you don't think they're back, go out to Montana or Wyoming, go in any bar and say the word wolf, and you will have a full-on fist fight on your hands. It, I got a Western. But it's a fight worth having to bring them back. And my very favorite animal from growing up in Florida is the American alligator, and they are back in force. When I was a kid, you couldn't find them. We spent a lot of our misspent youth trying to at night, swimming at night in swamps. You don't want to do that today. <laughs> there are six times as many American alligators today as there were just 50 years ago. So species can make a comeback. How does this happen? It does not happen by a miracle. It happens by a 99 to 1 ratio. 1% 1 human effort, laws, tenacity, not giving up. 99% they come back because we are fortunate to live in a self-healing world. Ecosystems are built to come back. If a storm hits, uh, like the tsunami in, in Sumatra, if there's enough forest left, it'll rebuild. When a, far, a fire hits Yellowstone, it rebuilds. It's made to do that. Biodiversity holds the world steady. This doesn't just happen on an ecosystem level or a species comeback level. It happens on a cellular level. It happens to us. Uh, how many folks have ever broken a bone? Get him up. All right. I have a plate in my shoulder where, from a guy hit me in his car on my bicycle in OTR three years ago, so be careful. But the plate held the bone steady. You probably, when you were a kid, if you broke your arm or leg, went home, told your mom, hey, mom, the doctor fi my, fixed my arm. But you can ask an orthopedist, doctors can't fix bones. Bones heal themselves. The purpose of the cast is to hold the bone steady. If you don't think this later, look up on the web and look at bones. You can see x-rays online of how they heal and literally knit themselves back together. Uh, and we're fortunate to live in a world that is that way. The other thing we learned when Jane and I wrote this book was the only way that conservation works is when it's a win-win relationship. What that means is, uh, well, for instance, if you've ever wondered, how did the mountain gorilla survive the 
incredible trouble. The biggest genocide in the second half of the 20th century was in Rwanda, and yet nobody killed the mountain gorillas. And the reason is they provide great jobs. The biggest source of foreign exchange in the country of Rwanda is to get people to come see gorillas. Or Serengeti National Park, there's no reason it's not a cattle ranch for the Maasai, save for the fact that people come from around the world to see the wildlife there. Or coral reefs around the world for people to come see them, but they are the nurseries for wild fish. If you go to the country of Belize, it's the most pristine and largest reef shelf uh, outside of the Great Barrier Reef in Australia. That serves as a nursery for commercial fish, and so it's a win-win for people and animals. The best example in the world of that is about to come in here. The African cheetah is um, a species that has made a stabilized comeback. They went down from 100,000 to 10,000 during the 20th century, but over the last 25 years, their population has stabilized in countries like Namibia, Botswana, Tanzania, and this is Sarah the cheetah. She was recorded as the fastest running animal ever in 2012 by National Geographic. But cheetahs are a great model in those countries where farmers have come to realize if they change their practices, there's room for predators and livestock and people to live together. Conservation is this. It is not going to be bestowed upon us top down by the World Wildlife Fund and the UN. It will, in fact, be the result of billions of better decisions made every day by all of us all over the world. And it's not really about saving pandas and parrots. It's about saving people. Uh, in order to save ourselves, we have to save these guys and save the pizza. 